Alright, in this video I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, Scrivener for the PC. Uh, let me open it up here. Uh, so let's let bring this up. Um, you're going to start a new project. And I started out with script writing here, but uh, you can go to, I'm going to go to fiction and just select novel. Novel with parts I've never really touched on, but uh, my you can change the location where it's saved right away. Right now, mine is set to Dropbox, so it automatically saves to a cloud location. This is what I recommend. Um, when I first started writing, I had an incident where I got a new USB port installed on my desk, and when I started plugging the hard drive in that I was saving all my work to, uh, that hard drive got ruined. Uh, granted, I was able to use uh, some ex programs to bring it back, and then I found on the um, Scrivener forums, there is a thing where it automatically saves um, your project files to the computer you're working on, um, like a last backup automatically, which is actually what saved me. It wasn't the hard drive. So, yeah, pretty heartbreaking, but uh, I figured it out, and got that going but uh, so I definitely recommend saving to cloud-based storage so Dropbox definitely so I have this Dropbox account writing work um, and then here's where you name your project whenever I start writing I never have a title write off so I always just name it something random but um, that's just me so I'm just gonna do um, my novel or something so you're gonna click uh, create All right, here we go. Um, let me. Uh, I'm going to close my other one in the background. Now look at this. When I close it, it automatically creates a backup, which is awesome. Um, so here's the new one. I'm going to open this up. Let me uh, get this up here. All right. So it kind of gives you a format here of what you're doing, just kind of like a sample. Um, but here's where your manuscript is. You have a uh, scene, chapter, manuscript. So here, under chapter, this is the first thing right here. So that's uh, named. You know, I always left it chapter. You can you can rename it if you want. You can just right click on it and do rename. But um, I don't do that. I mean, this is where my chapters are. Manuscript. Um, you can click on that and uh, let's see here go to chapter see this isn't titled yet so what you'll do is go to add new text so I'm gonna call this new ch text chapter uh, one okay now you would click on it right right now it's in these bubble formats kinda like it's on a, a bulletin board which is easy access to uh, get to. You can change it to something like this, but I always go to that. You can even go to this here, but the bulletin board is the most uh, organized layout. So let's go to um, chapter one, and this is where you're going to start writing. So we're just going to be like chapter one. For s it always defaults to Corey or New. I eventually, I write in that, but I eventually change it to something else. I think Corey or New requires double spacing after periods, which isn't necessary, but... Um, like 24. Um, it pulls in all of your fonts from Windows. Some writing programs actually don't. They have their own stock stock font. Um, because uh, one of the novels that I wrote, I, I wanted a symbols that separated paragraphs. So that's what I did. I switched. I downloaded fonts and used those, which is quite handy. So chapter one, you start writing. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And so on and so forth. So then you're like, okay, done with the chapter. Go back to chapter add new text uh, chapter 2 enter there it is um, and you know it's always blank when this box over here shows nothing in it if there's something written you can kinda see like little scribblies inside that icon so select in here you're like chapter chapter 2 alright okay so I think you probably got the chapter thing down that's pretty simple um, now under manuscript um, double click on that. Let's see. Go to um, add 
new text and let me pull that up here actually I don't know if that's gonna work let's delete that Here's something I wanted to show you that I forgot. Um, under chapter setting, you can right click on here and uh, change icon. And I always go to, um, there's different flags. Where's my chapter icon? Oh, here we go. Um, label, that's what I wanted. You can change the icon, of course, but um, go to uh, chapter. See how it um, marks it as green? It's labeled as chapter. Um, so there's that. All right, so now under front matter, you have front matter manuscript format. So under manuscript format, you have this title page. So just expand that right here with these arrows. Select that, and here's where, you, where you, you will put your name, your address, phone number. So that way, when you send this off to maybe beta readers or something, this is all on here. And uh, you can even save it with, like, um, basically watermarks over it. All right, so you have paperback novel, title page. Put your project um, title and then the full name. Puts it in there put it inside the parentheses and the dollar mark um, because you'll see when you save it what it looks like so you have copyright this is where you will put the name and you like your ISBN number sometimes your AS um, IN number from Amazon too to publish it then you have your dedication page okay so uh, an ebook um, you have cover so this is where you will drop in your cover it's easy because you can actually just drag and drop it so for example like I, I'm into my Dropbox here and I'm gonna drag my novel front cover um, shoot let's see right here put it in there and it's gonna put this right there okay under cover so let me do should do it just like that maybe uh, maybe you can bring it in and then delete this one move to trash did that do it nope let's uh, undo that control Z or edit undo let's just pull that back up here under ebook I take that back, the drag and drop. Um, go to ebook, right click on that, and uh, do add and click files. And this is where you can add your um, cover. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. There we go. Alright, so delete this one. Move to trash. We don't want it. But what we have now is the front cover right there. Um, dedication, you know, you change that to uh, Mark Twain. All right, so uh, there's the front cover. Um, once, you, and then you've added your chapter. Say everything's. You want to do a. Uh, you want to compile it now. Everything's um, how you want it. You have everything uh, written out your novels put together you've gone through a couple edits you're like let's or you just you want to compile it because just so you have it um, <clears throat> so um, you're gonna click compile right here now uh, custom I guess so compile for uh, we're gonna do this for um, an ebook. Okay, 
expand that. Um, so this is it, and you want to do, uh, right now only one thing is check, so you want to check all these. Alright, now cover. This is where you're going to select that image that's right here, so it's that one. See? And then, um, right now that's EPUB, but you can go uh, OB for the Kindle. Now there's formatting here. Uh, I didn't really need to touch that. Um, and this data is what will show up um, basically for the e-reader. So you would do, this is my title, we're going to do um, contributors, maybe if you want somebody else in there, maybe there's an artist or something. This is where you're going to put in your synopsis for the book. Um, I'm put some test in there. And then publisher, you know, if you're self, you know, you can do that. If you have a publisher, you'll put that in there. Write, you. Uh, date it's published, you can put that in there. Uh, I never touched that, uh, the identifier. It's not really necessary. So when you have that all set, you have your cover, everything, you would click compile, and it will compile the, uh, the um, book into uh, a Mobi file. Or you can even change it to EPUB or PDF. Um, there's other formats too, like if you have to send it to an editor, they usually require um, an RTF format. Uh, so that's that. Um, I hope this is kind of giving you a little bit of info on how to start. It's pretty simple. Um, now I did want to show you something. Edit. Uh, go into Tools and Options. Backup. Now, this is important. This is what I do. Um, use date and backup file names. Compress automatic backs up, backup to zip files. Um, I recommend doing that. Um, backup with each manual save. Every time you click save, it's going to also make a backup. Backup on project close. Um, I don't have that checked. I don't want it to back up on project open just in case I go to a, my laptop and I'm not on my desktop. Um, because if I do that and I open the project from there and it's not reading from the right location, it's going to overwrite it. So um, I have turn on automatic backups. Retain backup files. Only keep 10 of the most recent backup files. That keeps it pretty clean. So you can do 25, but I have it set on 10. Now this is where you're going to choose where you want those backups to go. Um, you would click choose. Um, navigate to that folder. Um, this is mine right here. And that's where it's going to go. So that is one of the first things you want to set up. You just go into tools and do that. So click cancel on that. And... Uh, that's it. I hope this has uh, been helpful.